så ska jag träffa Guy Tang och jag är så, bara så sjukt eh, spänd och jag ska bli, det ska bli så jävla roligt att göra det. Eh, och eh, till er som ställde frågor så har det verkligen varit... Alltså för att bara säga det, det är så sjukt pinsamt att gå runt med en kamera i nyllet. Alltså det är verkligen så sjukt pinsamt. Men eh, ja, ja, folk får väl säga vad de, vad de vill. Jag ska vara där om typ 10 minuter så att jag eh, ska stå här och typ bara... Bara vara så länge. Ja, jag hoppas, jag kollar på lite intervjuer och sådär. Och eh, vad jag vet så ska han vara skittrevlig och väldigt, väldigt smart. Så att, ja, vi får se hur, eh, hur det går helt enkelt. Men jag är sjukt nervös, det ska bli jätteroligt. Och eh, jag känner typ att, ja, det är ju så spänd. Men jag hoppas att jag kommer kunna filma i alla fall. Så ni får träffa honom. that I'm so nervous and everything but this guy he is amazing <laughs> and, uh, I have so much fun I so so far I'm loving all your questions I think they're really cool you yeah, just... I forgot to film <laughs> you forgot yeah you forgot <laughs> to film I can talk about um, the hair bestie and uh, when hairdressers compete to each other and uh, really rough to each other Yeah, yeah, because you were mentioning like how sometimes hairdressers can be very competitive with each yeah. other and you're asking me about like how, how I built the community of hair besties family and how we all get along and it's more of a positive environment. And I was saying like how like uh, hair besties is an endearment of what I call my followers, which who became my family and we built this community together. Um, nobody understands us like we do as hairstylists. So I, I feel like you know sometimes when we have hard moments we kind of lean on each other versus like going up against each other so i think that's kind of cool that um i am able to send that message out there and as i was saying that we all sometimes we're all guilty of it we're humans we're vulnerable we have feelings and Am I, am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. And it does, it's not just hairdressers, it's everything. I mean, I was saying like... But I feel like hairdressers is more rough with each other. I think it's because it's an art form, and art form is from... Um, uh, it, we, ch we express our art through emotion, and sometimes because of the emotions, we become very sensitive and we feel vulnerable, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I think that you have to be very com comfortable in your own skin. We all have, I mean, it's hard to be comfortable in your own skin. Mm -hmm. I think we all fight it. And that's why I feel, you know, it gives, you know, you have to find a way to disconnect from your own body. Mm -hmm. So I always disconnect myself and, and channel positive, energy into my life you know <laughs> but you, do you have not do you have feel that that people want to do copy you or do exactly that you do to be oh than you and i'm gonna be better than him and everything <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like that yeah you know uh, because you open yourself so much on the internet yeah you, you, you are yeah. an educator but I, I do you feel sometimes that oh my god he gonna he or she gonna take my Well, I think, I, well, well, who said, was it Coco Chanel made a comment, if you want to be original, pre be prepared to be copied. It's like that with anyone, Madonna, Madonna's original, and then Debbie Gibson came, and Paula Abdul, and then Britney Spears. Um, I think Madonna is a great example of like a pioneer and someone who's, she's a confident woman, she owns her craft and even she's vulnerable, even she has insecurities. I mean, like when Lady Gaga came out, you know, but the same thing, Madonna's also a legend. She's an icon. She, you know, so everyone will get compared to Madonna. Anyone new that comes out, you know, like when Britney came out, she got compared to Madonna. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But Madonna will always be Madonna. And But you have to be that successful to being copy. If you're not that successful uh -huh. and someone to take your techniques and so on, that's See, not the same thing. Well, you know how Britney is successful too, but 
um, Madonna actually embraced Britney instead of like going up against Britney and be jealous of Britney. What I find that Madonna actually embraced her. She do, did a duet with her and collaborate with her, and she see her as almost like her child. So I always use that as an example. Sometimes because I, it's never going to be about me forever. I'm going to get old. No. Uh, yeah. No. No. <laughs> I'm going to get old. Look at it. No, no. I'm going to get old. I'm going to die one day. You know, we're all because we're, we're only human, and we're able to. You know, what if you break your arm, or what if you yeah. fall down and you can't do hair anymore? What are you left with? And I, I rather, I want to carry on a legacy. You know, I want to share because I want to leave something behind. I want to, um, you know, I, I'm training a couple of my hairstylist friends back home to, you know, be an artist with me and I wouldn't say for me but with me because I see it uh, as building a team and sometimes it's you know you have to really think outside of yourself and it's hard to let go of uh, an ego and I know a lot of people has that ego and yeah. so you know and I think we all kind of want to have it but what I, I see is I, I see the bigger picture and I see that sometimes it's more than who we are you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The world is more than who we are. And uh, you, you look at the legends that came before us, you look at Vidal Sassoon, and you look at so many iconic people, and they, they became iconic because um, they, they're, they're inspiration leaders, they send a, a great message out there, and I admit that they inspire me. Vidal Sassoon inspired me a lot, and I, so many hairstylers has, has inspired me. So usually during my interviews when um, they asked me who inspired me. I mean, I can name like... Yeah, that was one of my questions. Who inspired you? What uh, or who inspired you? I would say my one of my biggest mentors uh, was a, a man named Damien Carney. I find him to be one of the most incredible hairstylists. And he... Honestly, I learned how to cut good hair because of him. <laughs> And I learned yeah, that is a little funny too because <laughs> everybody see you as the color and the hair color monster, but you cut. Yeah, too. I do. I do. do people uh, forget forget that they forget it because I do so many colors, so it kind of overshadows the haircut. But honestly, Damien is a great hair cutter, and I he's a great man. He has mentored me mm -hmm. along the way, so I, I I love and adore him. And so many people that our hair colorists inspire me too. Like I remember there's this wonderful artist named Linda Yodici, she's mm -hmm. with the Paul Mitchell team, mm -hmm. um, Stephanie Kachelski, and uh, there's this great hair color named Takashi Kitamura. He's Japanese and he cuts hair like <laughs> I go, oh my God, I'm so inspired by him. And honestly, it's like, I want to cut like him. I, 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 I really can't cut like him, you know, but I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I try my best, and I just do the best I can. Um, and even with color, I don't think I don't name myself as like, oh, I invented anything. I I just created something that I feel tells my story, I yeah. guess. Because mm -hmm. when I balayage, I kind of just do it the way I do it. But I know there's so many different techniques. Mm -hmm. um, when I tone hair, you know, I'm very patient. I've heard. That you put eight hours on one client a day. Is that true? I have. It's usually color correction, like when I do uh, Asian hair, or and their hair is like down to their like waist or their butt, and their hair is like their ponytail is like that thick, and so and then they come in with black dyes and they want to be blonde and then they want to have pink and green. So sometimes it's like it's a lot of work. So you know you think about the multi steps: removing the color, bleaching the color, re-bleaching it again, blow drying it each step, reapplying something else, trying to you know hair cutting styling and then trying to eat lunch yeah you eat lunch when you're when my client. <laughs> the client sit in. is that yeah. so cool yeah well you know i try to make the best out of every situation because i know that there's only so many time in the day and i don't look i don't look at it for money like a lot of people go uh if you do four clients at once you can make more money mm -hmm. but to me I focus on the quality over the quantity and I don't focus on the money because I want to be able to sleep at night. I want to be able to create beautiful work so I'm able to sleep at night. Um, even though I was making less money because I'm only doing one, I go to bed happy because I took a beautiful picture of the hair that I did. That is the best feeling <laughs> yeah. of the day. So to me, that that's worth it more than like doing four people but then not able to capture the picture. and not being able to finish it the way I want to finish it, okay. but 
that's just, you know, that's me, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. That's your thing. That's, yeah, I, I'm just really patient. But you do everything just you on yeah, yourself. Yeah. You know, you cut, you do everything. You do everything. Yeah, yeah. Because if you look at other the world and then I sweep the floor. <laughs> I, sweep the, I sweep the floor. I but wipe the mirrors. People have you know, and have a team that, you know, wash and yeah. tone and do everything. Mm -hmm. But you do everything on your own. Yeah, when, when I'm in the salon, luckily, and some hair shows, I, some, not all, but you know, like here in Sweden, I'm here over the weekend, I have a, a team of people that will be helping me, mm -hmm. you know, like three other folks, because we have to do 12 models in one day. Oh my God. So there, you need help. <laughs> yeah, I need help. And, and, and I think it's great because what I find through education is even when I share my techniques with uh, my hair besties or other hairdressers, what I find is that they always do it their own way. They never listen to how I tell them. I'll be like, mix it with 40 volume or mix it with Olaplex or mix it with, they'll end up mixing it with like something totally different, like a different developer. They didn't process it for the full time. They rinse it too fast. So that's the thing, it's like, I, instead of um, worrying about everyone emulating, you just do you because I constantly change. Like I get bored. Like uh, if you asked me what I was doing five years ago, all I was doing was ombre. I did. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, ombre, 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 ombre. But that is a trend that's really stick to yeah. all the years. Yeah, and I and I still do it sometimes. But what I find is that I got bored. Yeah. I got bored of doing something I was good at because I wanted to do something I was not good at I was I wanted to do something I was maybe even bad at yeah. you know like I was very um, insecure about curly hair for the longest <laughs> time I was like oh my god I'm scared of curls <laughs> you're scared of I'm curls? Scared of curls. <laughs> and then what happened was I was like I'm gonna do curly hair I'm gonna do perm I'm gonna perm and guess what I did I, I permed my own hair no yeah this was like four years ago I start I have longer hair down here and then I permed it. <laughs> I permed it because I go, I gotta face my fears. <laughs> and now I love curly hair. But I think that's the thing, like we always wanna do what we're good at. I'd rather do what I'm bad at. <laughs> but that, I, I feel like I stick in that kind of pattern that it, you know, I, I love to do ombre, ombre has been everything for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, you know, I, I get bored of it, but you have clients, you have to make your own living. So you cannot tell your clients, yeah, uh, yeah, you wanna ombre, but, um, I'm bored. I'm bored. <laughs> yeah. So can we do red? And they said, no, I want my ombre. I love it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. What should I do? Well, you know what I do? I, because um, my clients were the same. What I do is I find someone that will let me do maybe green hair or blue hair. And when I put that work out there, what happened is someone else sees it and someone else wants it. What do they like? The hard part is then it's a challenge because yeah. you're not doing your usual routine. It's kind of like, you know how you're comfortable doing the same thing? You yeah. wake up at 7. Yeah, I do that you, every you, thing. That's yeah, a thing. routine. You mm -hmm. feel safe. But when you're thrown off your schedule and you're doing something different, mm -hmm. it becomes scary. You feel uncomfortable. Something is not right because you're not your right mind frame. Mm -hmm. So I think what happened is with, when we're doing hair, when we're used to doing balayage ombre day after day mm -hmm. after day, mm -hmm. we feel comfortable, but we're also bored yeah. because we're not challenging ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing something different, like you know, like a perm, <laughs> and you're That's like, the perm. and you get, you, you get kind of mad, you're like, yeah. but then you know it's because it's, it's, it's a challenge, mm -hmm. and you need that challenge, and um, you need it to grow, mm -hmm. and the reason why I understand that so well is because I go to the gym, yeah. and I hate doing legs, I hate doing squats, but I know if I want my legs to grow, I have to work them out mm -hmm. and I have to go through pain because it, it hurts. Yeah. And then and you, that gets results. And you, but you get results. Uh -huh. You it's like the the prize or the reward that you get from enduring something mm -hmm. is worth everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's how I feel about it. And that's why I feel about like playing it safe versus challenging yourself. Mm -hmm. I think you get further when you challenge yourself and you also, when you don't care, you also live a more carefree life. Yeah, you know, I feel it's, it's, it's healthier, because I feel like if we live our whole life worrying and getting upset, we're not, it's not healthy. Mm. It's not healthy. And <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> you know, it's not, not healthy. But I ask my, uh, my blog readers uh, a lot of questions and the most, it, it was two questions was the most and one how do you neutral neutralize uh, yellow pigment in a blonde hair uh -huh. at home 
the best at home. Okay. Um, well, I'm sure you're aware of like violet shampoos, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's it is violet conditioner. They asked me, do, did he has a secret? Oh well. Uh, there's many things, like sometimes you can add fashion colors into your shampoo and conditioner, and that helps. <laughs> like uh, in the US, we have silver direct dyes. You can actually add them to your conditioner, mm -hmm. or I like to add them to my Olaplex number three treatment mm -hmm. as a take home. Mm -hmm. So you get the client to take home the Olaplex number three, mm -hmm. and I add like, um, uh, the silver direct dyes into it because it's a, it's a direct dye, it stains mm -hmm. the hair. So whenever they need to refresh their hair and they want their hair to be more silver, like I've been doing a lot of silver colors lately, mm -hmm. it gives them, it, it, it extends the duration of their silver icy blonde. Or um, if you want it to be more, like there's lots of, right now pastel color is really popular, mm -hmm. like lavender or strawberry pastel blondes. Mm -hmm. You can inject semi-permanent pigments. Um, whether it's crazy color, do you got crazy color here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that you can you can inject. So you take those. up like a like a conditioner and a purple. Yeah, like a like a pea size. You put a pea size into your conditioner or your Olaplex treatment, depending on what it is. You can do a mask. Um, you know, so there's different things. You know, uh, you can also add it to your shampoo, mm -hmm. but. Just like with anything else, porosity plays a role. So if your ends are really porous, it might suck it up more down here, and then up here might not take it as much. So you still have to think, should I apply it up here first, and then just let the water run it down? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So those are so th those are other ways you could maintain it. And some brands in the U.S., their purple shampoos are so strong, it, turn, it turns your hair purple. We don't have that in Sweden. Yeah, yeah, so it varies. <laughs> yeah. Another question is, if you're a hairdresser and want to be as successful as hell, what is your three best tips? Be a successful hairdresser? Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes I get asked this and what my best recommendation is, success means something different to everybody. Mm -hmm. Everyone sees success differently. Good, good lighting now, no? Yeah, yeah, the, light, yeah the, the lighting got better in here. No, but a lot of people think success is, oh, doing what Guy Tang is doing. Yeah, everybody wants to be you. <laughs> but honestly, like, uh, you know, it's, success can mean having kids for some people. Yeah. I mean, what if you want kids? You know, what yeah. if you want to find a, I don't know if you're married or, or have a husband or whatever. Some people want to get, find the right man and settle down. Some people want to move into a small town. Some people want to um, maybe have a, a, a business or a brand or, um, so it varies with everyone. Um, I've, I've noticed that with every hairdresser. I used to think that everybody wants to be, you know, this Hollywood hairdresser, you know, but then I realized when I start meeting with a lot of hair besties, yeah. you know, I found that a lot of them, they, they're just simple. They want to get married. They want to fall in love, um, have two kids, live um, in a white a house with a white picket fence, and feel safe. Um, one of my good friends, Liz, back at home, she actually assists Tracy Cunningham, who's a celebrity hairstylist. You know, <laughs> I talk to her all the time, and she she's awesome because she when we hang out, we don't even talk about hair. We talk about good food. All we talk about is going out to eat. And I think it's cool that, oh look, Almar's going away, bye Almar. <laughs> so yeah, we have friends in here. So um, I think it's cool that sometimes when we hang out with fellow hairdresser friends, mm -hmm. we don't always talk about hair. We talk about food, we talk about life, and, and just enjoying good food. So sometimes mm -hmm. success is just being healthy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes success is, maybe, for me, I like to have good abs, and I like to, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know, because even for me, I don't even feel like I'm that successful, you know? Come like, on. No, there's a lot of things You're I want. You're amazing, <laughs> you share with the world. And yeah, well, I, I you know. For me, I, I always been like knowledge, that you have to be good at something to success. I feel like we always have room to grow. You know, like a lot of people think, this is it, this is it, I'm gonna get there. But when you get there, you find out like, oh, is this what I really want or do I want more? You know, or do I want something else? And this, this happened to me many times in my life. Sometimes I think I want one thing and then when I get there, I realize, you know, I want to make a, a left turn or a right turn versus, you know, staying there because you know, like one of my biggest goals when I first started doing hair was, I want to be a platform artist. <laughs> I want to be on stage. But you are. You know, and, and what happened was, and I worked for a hair product company, and then I got to do it, 
and it wasn't everything I thought it was. And then I, I got out of it for, I think two years. I left working for the company to, maybe two and a half years. And I go, this is it, I don't want to do it anymore. I had different plans in my life. I want to do something else, you know, whatever. Uh, and then out of nowhere, you know, I didn't know this was going to happen. So when it happened, it became a, a demand and I got asked to be on stage again. And I go, what? But back then when I was on stage, I was on stage for a company. Mm-hmm. But you this, were not you. I was not me. Oh. Then all of a sudden I got asked to come back to be on stage to represent my own brand, to, to share knowledge with people. And I didn't realize, I mean, I know I had some followers, but I didn't realize 1,500 people were going to show up to the event and um, want to learn from me. And I go, oh my God, I was in shock. And honestly, that changed my life. It made me want to share more. It made me... I, be, I, I end up having a responsibility. It's mm-hmm. a huge responsibility because I realized all these people look up. A lot of them look up to me and uh, some of them made me cry because they were crying and I was like, this is a responsibility. Mm-hmm. I have to make sure that I continue to give them more and share more and um, do things to help them, um, the, hair, the community grow mm-hmm. because I didn't, I didn't realize at first that, you know, I affected that many people's lives. So when I learned that I affected that many people, I want to continue because I knew I was making a difference. I knew I was making a difference and I knew it's needed. I knew we needed it uh, in, in our industry because it's something that was missing. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this and I'm going to um, uh, continue to you know, share and uh, change the industry for the better because it's something that's yeah. needed. It feels you know? like you really have success with that. Nu har jag i alla fall suttit här med Gary Tang och jag hoppas att ni har fått svar på alla möjliga olika frågor och jag är jätteglad att vi var tvungna att springa nu här, jag ska ta lite bilder. So guys, thank you so much for being my little vlog here and I hope you guys have a great day. Have a great day, thank, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okej, okay, nu går jag härifrån och alltså, ni får verkligen ursäkta, ursäkta min engelska, men alltså, jag är så jävla nervös. Och så visste jag typ inte riktigt så här vad jag skulle säga och vad jag skulle göra. Så att, ja, men det, var, det var så jävla roligt och jag kände bara så här... Jag fick så mycket energi. Det, alltså det är helt otroligt. Och vi bara babblade, gick över tiden. Jag har en kund som står och väntar på mig på salongen. Nu är jag på väg in till salongen och jag ska ha lite kunder. Och nu har jag lugnat ner mig lite grann. Men allting gick verkligen så sjukt bra och jag är så jävla glad. Och jag vill bara hem och redigera det här nu så att jag verkligen så här... Vi får se hur det blev. Eh, ja, vi ses inne på salongen. Hello. Hello. Här är vi Isabelle. Hej Isabelle. Hej. Här är vi Martin. Hej. The Venture of the whole salon. <laughs> vi kör vlogg idag. Jaha. Hej, kolla vem det här är. Det är jag. Det är min lilla älskling. Här står jag på jobbet. Ja, här, Oj, kommer er. Här, här kommer Elin. Hon är ja. lite längre än jag. Då. Ja. De kollar ner på mig. <laughs> Han får en dubbelhaka då. Så vad fint det blev. Åh, oh, jag har fått ett paket. Jag ställer det där. Shit, vilket bra ljus det var inne. Nu ska jag hänga av med jäken. Okej. Okay. Ska vi se vad det här är för någonting då? Ah. Jag hoppas att det Ni vet ju att jag inte gillar konsumentprodukter. Nej, men vad kul! Det är någon uh, texture med Väldigt roliga förpackningar dock. Vi får se, jag får väl testa de här och se vad som, vad som händer. Fin förpackning dock. Förresten, alltså mitt hår, alltså jag älskar verkligen längden på mitt hår nu. Det är ganska så här rakt avklippt, men jag verkligen älskar hur det, hur det är nu. Och tack för alla er som verkligen kommenterade och tyckte att det var fint och att ni gillade längden liksom. Um, för mig, som jag sa också, för mig handlar det om liksom att den förändringen man gör med sig själv ska vara lika betydelsefull som den lilla eller stora. Och det är väl självklart att ni bara har så färg om rött eller svart eller blont eller vitt eller allt möjligt. Så är det så här, klart att det blir en större förändring och att det är en betydligt större underhållning. Men för mig handlar det mer liksom om vad man själv tycker och vad ni tycker om er själva. Det är det som för mig är det viktigaste. Nu ringer det här också. Nu ringer Merlin. Hallå, snygging! <laughs> Hej! 
Men det är jätte jättebra, jag är helt så här full av life här nu, jag är ju borta att träffa Gai Tang Alltså jag har ju varit så jävla skitnödig så att jag var så här. Aah. jag vet knappt om jag pratade typ franska eller engelska, jag har ingen aning om jag pratar för språk <laughs> jag filmar dig. Det är Det är så här. Det är så Det är Det Svint och tuss. Svint och tuss du. Ett litet marslin. Här, klappa. Kan jag sälja det där året? Ja, hur kan du få på det? 100 spänn. Om ni vill köpa det här året som har slutat på den här fina kvinnan. Då är det bara att maila in till donerahår.com. Så kan du få en slant. Okej, nu sitter med Linda i färg och jag sitter och väntar på att den ska bli klar. Men jag måste äta lunch. Alltså jag har inte hunnit äta någonting sen frukost och så jag måste verkligen äta någon mat. Så att jag tog lite sushi och ska slänga i med det och sen så ska jag skölja. Men alltså såg ni hur mycket jag klippt av? Alltså det är helt sjukt. Alltså jag, ser, ja, jag vill bara göra klart det och så ska ni få se vilken färg det blir också för det, det kommer bli galet. Allt hår som kom från den där lilla flickan. Nu har jag en fisha på, men alltså, come on! Sjukt! Nu är jag i alla fall på väg hem. Och jag ber om ursäkt för att det är mörkt ute, men vi bor i Sverige. Så, ja, och jag jobbar så jävla sent hem. Så att det, ja, det är som vanligt. Det är mörkt när jag går upp och mörkt när jag vaknar. Eller åker hem. Det har varit en superbra dag verkligen. Jag har verkligen haft, jag fick så mycket energi av Guy Tang i morse och han kommenterade på min bild. Jag skrev så här typ att jag tackade för dagen och slutade en bild på oss och han skrev en kommentar till mig. Alltså kan du förstå? Kan du förstå det? Det är helt sjukt. Det är totalt fruktansvärt jävla sjukt. Och nej, äh, jag var bara jätteglad att han ens kommenterade för det var verkligen så här, han hade inte ens kunnat behövt gjort det. Men jag blev jätteglad att han ändå gjorde det. Ehm. Och sen har jag två helt magiska eh, makeovers som jag ska lägga ut bilder på. Jag vet inte om den här vloggen kommer hinna komma innan, eh, eller efter bilderna, innan bilderna. Men ja, jag har haft det sjukt. Ja, ah, nu fick jag lite ljus. Tänker jag. Ah, ja, men jag vill i alla fall tacka så mycket för att ni hängde med mig idag. Och jag hoppas att jag vloggade ändå rätt okej, okay, även fast jag är typ helt ny på det här. Och det kanske, ja... Jag har ju alltid så jävla prestationsångest i typ allting jag gör. Jag har väl börjat vlogga jättelänge. Men jag vet inte. Det är så svårt att, få att vlogga på salongen också. För att jag, man håller ju på så jävla mycket med 
man är själv liksom, så det är svårt att, att filma och sen vill jag att mina kunder ska ändå känna liksom att jag har full fokus på dem och inte bara på film liksom. Nej, men that's it! Jag är jätteglad att ni hängde med mig idag och jag hoppas att ni gillar den här vloggen och snälla kommentera vad ni tyckte. Tyckte ni inte om den så behöver ni inte vara elaka, men vara snälla mot varandra. Eh, och sen som, som Guy Tang sa i morse att vi ska vara hårbästisar. Det tyckte jag var jättebra. Eh, tack för att ni tittade hörni. Och så ses vi igen. Snart igen. Puss och klass. Hej då.